Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. You're here at Tetrix RoboBench. My name's Tim, I'm with Pitsco Education. And what we wanna to do today is cover the building or the putting together of the gripper kit from the Tetrix Prime starter set. Now I wanna start by letting everybody know and make sure you're, you're comfortable with the fact that everything you're gonna to need today is in your starter, Tetrix starter set. So you don't have to worry about gathering anything extra, but I wanna kinda of make sure everyone is comfortable with the fact that you are gonna to need to gather some things together to make sure that this whole process goes as smoothly as it can. And I also wanna make sure everyone is understanding and comfortable with the fact that there are instructions in the kit that go through this, but because some people are more visual learners, we thought we'd do this video to, to help with that. So if you'll gather up from your starter set, we want the game pad wireless controller, we want the wireless receiver that goes with that. We want your battery. We want to make sure that you get the standard servo that is Mark 322 HD on the outside. You'll need to get your screwdriver. Um, this is going to have the Phillips head screwdrivers in that. You'll need to get actually the gripper kit. That's going to be the main thing. And then maybe to help it a little bit, if you get a little small container to hold the screws and, and something to open the bags, that's going to help you out with this as well. But let's start with the gripper kit. Let's go ahead and open that up. And I want you to notice that there are several things, including the instructions that are part of this kit that we need to make sure we identify. So I'm just gonna go through those real quick. There's the mounting plate, you need one of those. There's the jaws, you'll need uh, one bag of those. There's washers, that's gonna be very important. You'll have two geared arms, so you need to make sure you've got both of those. You'll have uh, four of the actual uh, identical arms that uh, form the parallelogram, so make sure you find those. And then you'll have two bags of um, metal screws, and these are gonna be very important. They're two different lengths. So I want everyone to kind of get those all out, and if you'll go ahead and open these bags up, and then we'll go ahead and continue from there. So you can see that I've got everything taken out of the bags and um, laid out here. I wanna make sure that everyone, again, recognizes that we've got the mounting plate We've got two identical jaws. We've got two of the gear arms. Now these are two different arms if you look at them closely. So we'll look at those a little bit closer in a minute. We've got the four extension arms there that are identical. I've got four of the longer screws and then I've got um, the uh, smaller screws along with the washers that go with those to mount onto our servo plate. So with everything here, we're gonna start with uh, our standard servo. And again, we wanna make sure that uh, we recognize that this is the standard servo. It says HS322HD on the outside of the box. Um, we're gonna have, open up that box and go ahead and pull the servo out. Now, uh, you'll see I've got a sticker down here that you might or might not see on your servo itself, but if it's not on your servo, we, we'd like you to go ahead and take that standard servo sticker just to help identify this later on. And let's put that on the servo itself. So I'm just gonna put this on the side right here that identifies this servo as a standard servo. So that's the very first thing that I'm gonna do. Then um, the next thing that I'm gonna do with this servo is I'm gonna take the existing servo horn off of this servo. So if you'll pick up your Phillips head screwdriver, this is a simple process. We're gonna just gonna uh, unscrew this servo horn from the existing servo. Now, while I'm doing this, I do want to make sure that everybody recognizes that we are working with metal screws and plastic parts. So I know everybody has their Wheaties in the morning and, and it has to be nice and strong and everything, but this is one of those instances where snug is good. We do not want to over tighten these metal screws into the plastic because we can strip them out. So that's an important part as we go through this process that I want to make sure everybody remembers. So now that we've got the servo horn off the servo, we're gonna take and we're gonna mount that onto the mounting plate. So here's the mounting plate. And we're going to, if you notice, there's two sides, there's a top and there's a bottom. So we're gonna turn that to the bottom. And you'll see that we've got four mounting holes and we've got a small hole for the actual gear on the servo to go through. So I'm gonna take that servo, I'm gonna turn it upside down, place it onto the mounting plate just like that. And I'm gonna take my four longer Phillips head screws. Make sure that you uh, get the longer of the screws. We're gonna put those into the holes, if I can 
keep from fumbling around here, just like that. And I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to tighten that down again, remembering that I'm metal screw into plastic. So this just is snug, folks. You don't have to get really rough with this. We don't want to strip that hole out. So I'm going to put all four of those into my servo, into my mounting plate, and I'm going to just fasten those down. So as soon as I get done with this, we'll go on to the next step. This next step is very important in the fact that it's going to allow you to center this servo. A standard servo has a range of motion. Uh, if you think about a, a clock going from 3 o'clock all the way back through 12 to 9, um, that's a range of motion. So we want to make sure our servo is centered so that it always comes back to 12 and we can go left and right as full range of motion. So to do that, I'm going to take my servo and I'm going to plug it into my wireless uh, receiver. Doesn't matter which uh, of the uh, channels that we plug it into, but we do want to make sure that our orientation of our wires is um, the correct way. And it should be yellow to the inside, yellow, uh, red, black. So I'm just going to plug this into channel number one, if you can see right like that. Um, so it's plugged into the channel. I'm going to take my battery and I'm going to plug it into where the battery label is on the receiver. And I'll know that I've got my battery plugged in correctly if I get a red flashing light. You'll see that I don't have that there, so I've got that backwards. So I'm going to plug it in the correct way. And now you see I've got a red flashing light. When I get my red flashing light, I'm going to go over to my gamepad, and I'm going to simply turn my gamepad on. And as it pairs to the receiver, I get a solid red light. When you get that, your servo has actually gone to a center position. So this is where we know if we have this centered, we're ready to go ahead and mount our servo horn gear. Now this is the one that if you, if you look at it very closely, there's a Tetrix logo. And if you look on the back of this, there is a uh, replacement for the servo horn. It's actually um, geared inside there. So we want to take this servo horn um, gear and we want to place it on top of the servo and it's going to be very important the position that we put this on your mount so we want to make sure that that arm I'm going to hold it here so you can see it is uh, sticking approximately straight out or perpendicular to this mount once we have it in that position I'm going to simply press that down just like that Again, we want to make sure that it is firmly down on the horn and it's sticking straight out. And uh, at that point, you can go ahead and remove that from the um, receiver, remove the power. When I do that, now it allows me to rotate that servo. And I, what I want to make sure that I do is have full range of motion. I can rotate all the way to the left and I can rotate all the way to the right and that's going to give me approximately my correct location. Once I've done that, I can take my little black screw that I used to remove the original servo horn, and I'm going to put that right back onto my servo, and I'm going to tighten that down. Again, snug, not over tight. From there, we're going to go on and we're going to mount the right jaw. Now, I'm going to take, again, these jaws are identical, but I do want to make sure everybody recognizes that on the jaws themselves, there's a, there's a Tetrix logo. So we're going to start with the right side, and this is easier for me if I do right to left. So I'm going to do my right side, and then I'm going to do my left, just because that's easier for me to remember. So I'm going to start with my right jaw. I'm going to place that right like that inside that arm. I'm going to take one of the short screws, one of the washers, I'm going to simply place that on top, my short screw. This can be kind of tricky if you've got large hands. And again, this is probably the most difficult part of it with these small parts. And again, I'm going to simply tighten that down snug, not over tight. Now I'm going to take one of my arms, 
And again, these are very important on these arms to recognize the orientation. They're all identical. We want to make sure that that small hole is pointed to the outside. And you'll see as I, I begin to assemble this that I'm making basically a parallelogram in this mount. So again, we're going to take the small screws, one of the washers, and we're going to go ahead and simply put that on all three of those mounting points, two on the top, one on the bottom. That's my top side. I'm going to turn that over. Take my bottom arm and again I want to make sure that that hole is on the outside. Matches the front. Okay, now I've got my entire right side and you'll, you'll see as I, I actually can move this through a range of motion and this helps illustrate um, the parallelogram of these two arms, but basically that um, jaw remains perpendicular to the mounting plate. So that's the way that we want that. And when we assemble this next side, the left side, we want to make sure that we start with again this geared arm uh, perpendicular to the mounting plate, approximately like that. And we're going to take the other um, geared arm, and you'll notice on this one that the bottom side does not have the geared um, receptacle for the servo. So if you look at that, it just has a smooth side on both sides of that. But one side does have a Tetrix logo. And if this is where on um, the right side we can see the Tetrix logo, on this left side we're not going to be able to see that. So we want to put that facing down. And if you'll see, what I want to do is I want to place this arm meshed with the teeth so that it is approximately straight out or perpendicular to the mount as well. So you want to carefully position that. I want to make sure my fingers are not in the way. So that it's sticking straight out and mesh those gears. It might take a little bit of a finagle or adjusting those to get those gears to mesh. And if you'll see, now I've got the gears to mesh, but I want to make sure everybody recognizes, see how this arm is back out? That we don't want that. So I want to pull that out just for a minute, reposition this arm again so it's straight out, and attempt to put that back down. Forgive me, I'm going to push this back so I can see it. There we go. Now if you'll see, I've got this arm straight out, this arm straight out. Once I have it like that, I'm going to take the remaining screws that I've got, and I'm going to assemble this arm just in the opposite of my right arm. Taking the small screws, and the washers, remembering not to over tighten. We we'll to make sure everybody recognizes again that with these small hole on these arms has to be pointed out. So that means the actual logo on this left side is going to be facing down. Make sure all our screws are snug. Now what we want to make sure happens here as you look at this is that when we move those in, the ideal um, operation is that those two jaws should meet and actually be equal. And you see, I've actually got this one off just a little bit. Um, when I bring them in, I want the top of those to be about the same. So what I'm going to do, I can leave these attached but I'm going to uh, loosen this one, take it back out, and I can pull this gear off just carefully so it disengages with the right side. 
and I'm going to make a small adjustment. There you can see if I've got that final adjustment in, when I open that all the way up, close it, those top of, of those jaws should meet together at the top in the center. And we can confirm that by going back to our initial test. I can plug this back into my uh, receiver. Again, I'm a, the yellow wire inside. And I can plug in my battery. Again, making sure that on my receiver got the uh, red light. Shows that my um, gamepad is connected. And when I actuate my gamepad, I can see that my servo is working. The jaws are uh, going all the way open, all the way closed, and meeting in the middle. And now we have an assembled gripper. And uh, the main thing that I want everybody to realize is that once we've got this assembled, we don't have to take that apart. We can actually go ahead and leave that together, put that in the kit just as it is, and then that way all we can do then is mount it onto our Tetrix Prime beams as we need it. And there you have the symbol gripper. So we want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the video and we want to encourage you to come back and check out additional videos here at Tetrix RoboBench. Have a great day and enjoy building those robots guys. Thank you.